Hi again, everyone. I just kind of wanted to offer a quick um, tour of the classroom. Um, I have been doing a running my little half day preschool program for almost two years now and have been loving every single minute of it. Um, and in this year and a half, I have accumulated a lot of fun activities and um, created a lot of teacher-made activities and games and things like that. And I thought it would be kind of fun to share with you guys. Um, we will start, I guess, with um, the little kitchenette area, which is where I am now. Let me back up. Sorry, I'm using my iPad. I'm sure that the picture quality isn't that great. Um, this is my little kitchenette area. This is where we do arts, crafts, have snacks, and uh, do this messy sensory motor activities and um, all that kind of stuff. Um, let's see, so let's start with art. Each day during um, small group activities, if the kids choose, um, they are welcome to do any of the art projects that are on the shelf. They have free access to the scissors, the crayons, markers, pencils, pens, um, there are stamps, bingo blotters, um, Play-Doh. These are all things that the children can choose to do on their own if they want. Uh, over here, every day we work um, on flashcards. And um, I made the little flashcard holder with um, just a little piece of wood and just put some paint on there to make it look like a little pencil, to make it a little festive. Um, I also um, created the flashcards with the little rings. Um, I made them with my, my die cutting machine, my Cricut. Um, lots of fun. Uh, and I like to create different things for the kids to do. They're a little more fun. Uh, let's see, over here I have another piece of wood on the wall and you'll see that there are um, like pencil holders there and um, pencil pouches rather. And inside each one are little um, quiet activities the children can choose to do if we're all in the kitchen and we're working on an activity. And one of my little friends finishes his worksheet or her worksheet ahead of time. And for some reason, if I need everybody to stay in the same area, then I will say, okay, so-and-so, go ahead and pick a busy bag and come sit back down at the table. And it's perfect. Um, I change out their busy bag activities all the time. So it's always something new. Um, next to the biggie, bleh, excuse me, <laughs> the busy bags, You'll notice that there is um, an activity wall that I made. I just got a bunch of different pieces of wood and painted them and added different activities to them. Um, my favorite one, as well as the kids, because <laughs> they're the important ones here, um, is uh, the Lego wall. Um, the kids love to build the Legos on the wall. That's a lot of fun. Um, moving right along, here is my classroom loft, which is my very favorite part of the classroom because um, I put so much work into it. <laughs> I built it myself. Not being able to afford the thousands of dollars that they sell the um, huge lofts that they have online, I decided to try my hand at making my own. Um, so I went ahead and made a giant table, <laughs> four foot tall by six foot long, uh, and just added walls and a gate and a slide and there you have it, it's a little playhouse. On the top part, the kids are allowed to do um, quiet activities. They can do, um, they can, um, there are a few activities up there for them to do and they can also play on the magnetic wall which always has different educational magnets on it. I change those out every two weeks or so. Um, let's see, and underneath is the dramatic play area which you'll notice is lit nicely. Um, I installed um, under cabinet, lighting underneath there so it didn't, you know, come across so dark. <laughs> the kids really seem to like that. Um, the stairs are just um, some shelving that you can buy at Ikea and I just added wood to it and that made it a little bit safer for the kids to go up and down the loft and it is um, a really good wow factor when kids and their families walk in the door. The kids always want to just play on the loft. I always want to play on the loft. <laughs> Let's see, over here next to the loft, I have my wall-mounted alphabet puzzle that I made. It is made with um, just the regular wooden letters that you can purchase at uh, Hobby Lobby or Michael's, and I just painted them a different color, all different colors, and they Velcro to the board behind it, and the kid's job is to match the letters. Let's see, and over here, 
I have my activities organized um, uh, by phonics and literacy and mathematics, and I also have a science area, and I'll show you that in a few minutes, but um, I think I thought it was important to um, organize this so that way the kids could, um, you know, I could say, can you please, you're welcome to pick any activity off of the purple phonics shelf, and the kids will know, once, the older ones especially, they'll know what, you know, what that means. Um, you'll notice that the front of each shelf is um, a different color, and all that is, all you're seeing here is just the regular um, inexpensive um, white shelves you can buy at Ikea, or not Ikea, but Target, and they're, I think I got these on sale, they were like $12.99 a piece, and when I installed them, they're great for space and they're great for holding the activities, but I felt they were kind of bland for what I was looking for. So I was trying to think if I could paint them, but um, was concerned that I wouldn't do a good job. I'm not real good at painting and I was worried about chipping. So I thought, hmm, my daughter had a ton of duct tape because she's, you know, when little girls, they make a lot of stuff with uh, crafts and she had outgrown them. And so I still had all this duct tape left. So I thought, hmm, wonder what would happen. So I thought I'd try it out and it's worked out really well. Um, it's also great for organization too. So if um, one of my little friends doesn't remember where he or she, you know, picked up the activity from, I can say, oh, that belongs on the yellow math shelf. And they'll, you know, they'll know what I'm talking about. Um, let's see, over here you'll see my murals. I painted those myself. I would have loved to afforded to, um, to be able to hire someone, but alas, wasn't, you know, wasn't in the budget. So I thought I would, you know, go ahead and try it. That's the, you know, what's the worst that can happen? Um, let's see, over here on the door towards the outdoors, this is the preschool entrance. Um, the door is magnetic, thankfully, so what I was able to do is I made um, a little chore chart. So each day, one of my friends um, has, a, most of the friends, not all of them, but um, <laughs> will have a little chore to do for the day. Um, somebody's responsibility will be to be the tortoise, and then they will pick up their name from the, from the door, and they will put their name on that chore. So it'll magnetize to it. I always offer a sensory motor activity with every unit I have. Um, and right here you'll notice that we have corn. <laughs> very messy, but very easy to clean up as well, and the kids really like it. Uh, let's see. Another area people are always asking about is um, my little marble maze. These are just inexpensive dollar store whistling tubes that I have used to, um, that I've used uh, zip ties to little um, shelves. Those are actually cubicle shelves that I just, you know, zip tied together and mounted to the wall with a hook. And it's pretty great because since they're, it's not a permanent structure and they're just hooked in, I can take that whole thing off and I can change it out for something else. Although thus far I have not. <laughs> um, here is my wall mural back here. And over there is the theme shelf. So each, each week slash month, it just depends, um, we have a different theme. This week is, um, our theme is animal mommies and their babies. So it's all about animals this week and the kids love that. Um, and then over here to the left, you'll notice we have a science shelf. On the science shelf, it's, um, you know, sciencey stuff. <laughs> um, Moving right along. Over here, you'll see, um, this is my circle cart, my circle time cart. And of course, over there on the side, I have the zippity doo dah. <laughs> um, it's a, just as, it's a zipper board is basically what it is. And the kids like that. It's great for fine motor skills. Um, but anyway, so this um, um, circle time cart is just um, a toy cart that I picked up at Target. And I mounted one of those trifold science boards to it, and to the front of the trifold, I added felt. So that way, everything that you see on the little cart is um, velcroed on. So when we go ahead and have circle time, and I want to implement, um, you know, a felt story, I just can unvelcro, you know, some of the activities off of the circle board, and um, use it for just a felt board. Um, which is perfect. Um, very quick and easy and great. And then over here, um, you'll notice that I have a lot of stuff mounted to my walls because I don't have a very big space, but I really like to utilize all the spaces that I have. And that means if you gotta use your walls, you gotta use your walls. So 
Here's another magnetic activity. And over here is my gumball machine. All of those numbers are Velcroed on, so the kids can Velcro and unvelcro, and we use that for, um, you know, number logic and learning to count and put the numbers in order. Let's see, and over here I have... Over here I have just a regular tool organizer that I repurposed, repurposed as a kind of like an office organizer. Um, I use I use duct tape to um, get rid of the gray drab sides and just um, labeled the fronts. And I'd love to tell you that this, that this has made my drawers in my classroom nice and clean, but alas, it has not. <laughs> um, they're still a mess. These little drawers are perfectly organized, but the other ones not so much. Over here, you'll notice that I have another wooden board that I have hot glued some clothespins to, and I just painted it and decorated it a little bit to make it kind of whimsical. Um, that is one of the drying racks. And over here is a flat drying rack that I made also out of the same kind of cubicle storage shelving unit that I used to make the marble maze over just that I showed you earlier. Um, all you have to do is just build a square out of the cubicle things and then zip tie along along the inside to your desired, you know, height. And this is perfect because when I first made this one, it was to hang up, you know, um, paint that needed to dry, paint activities or whatever, but I noticed that some of my little friends um, use um, more paint and so it was dripping. So um, I created this for the purposes of not getting paint dripped down my wall. Also, um, this I have another large unit like this that I keep in the storage closet, and that is, um, a, it's also a great um, puzzle organizer. Moving right along. Um, this little spot over here was supposed to be a desk that um, when my contractor was building, I said, no, no, please don't put any cabinets there. I want to have a space for a desk so I can, you know, do my paperwork and whatnot. And um, it just never worked out. It wasn't the right height and I wasn't comfortable. So now it's actually just storage for, you know, extra games and um, extra activities. Let's see. And last but not least, we have our class pet. These are our tortoises. And are they awake? One of them is. She's digging somewhere. Um, let's see, where is her? Pistachio. And the other one is a monkey bread is digging in her little hidey hole. But anyway, um, so this is my little classroom. And thank you so much for taking this tour with me. If you have any questions, feel free to comment. Have a good day, guys. Thanks. Bye.